What's up, chefs? Thanks for joining me again this week. Some of you know that over the summer, I've been training for the Chicago Marathon, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, it was canceled. But that didn't stop me from continuing my training and to actually run the thing in October. It's supposed to be on the 11th. I decided to extend it just a little bit and run it towards my birthday at the end of October. But since that's only a few weeks away, I decided I need to make a big change in my diet. So I'm cutting out sugar, dairy, most meats, and alcohol. For this episode, I'm going to be going through my refrigerator and cabinets and see what I can find to make some really good, quick, vegan-esque dishes. So I hope you enjoy this one. And let's get started. Okay, so since I'm starting this diet and I can't eat anything that actually tastes really, really good, I had to scour my pantry, scour the refrigerator, and find some really great stuff to make some quick vegetarian or vegan-esque items that are really easy and really quick with just random stuff that you can find in your house. And I came up with three really, really great options. So first up, we have stocks. Stocks are super versatile and you can use just about anything in your kitchen to make it, especially if you have some produce that's about to go bad. Throw it in a pot with some water with some aromatics, let it cook for a couple hours, and you are good to go. I know I said I was cutting out most meats for my diet, but waste not, want not. I've had these chicken bones in my freezer for a while and stock is the perfect use for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you happen to have it, chicken feet really helps any stock out, especially chicken. I'm gonna go ahead, fill that pot with water. If you have a stock pot, throw it on the burner, bring it to a boil, bring it down to a simmer, let it cook for a few hours. But I'm doing it the quick way. If you happen to have a pressure cooker Instapot, they're fantastic for making stocks very quickly. Put it in, set it. Instapot has a lot of great options like the stoop one. Two hours and 30 minutes from now, you're gonna have a great stock. Strain it, reduce it, make a soup out of it, reduce it enough for a gloss, whatever you want, it's gonna be great. Next up, we have fried rice. Fried rice is super easy to make as long as you have your rice made ahead of time. Make sure that you are having it at least the day before or a couple hours before. And always wash your rice when you make fried rice. Get rid of those starches. You wanna run it with cold water, really move it around, work those grains, and you're gonna drain it. And you're gonna do this a bunch of times until your water runs as clear as you can possibly get it. This looks really cloudy. We are not there yet. I'm gonna repeat the process. When I cook rice, I definitely like to use the rice maker. It's so much easier and it makes great rice just about every single time. Day old rice definitely works best for fried rice, but all you need is a couple hours. So get that rice out, get it in the refrigerator and let it get as cold as possible for the next couple hours. Woks are definitely the go-to cooking utensil for making fried rice, but if you don't have one, it's okay. A regular frying pan will work just fine. Just make sure you get it ripping hot, add a generous amount of oil, and add your vegetables from the firmest to the softest, so that way there's even cooking throughout the entire process. When you're ready to add your rice, just want to make sure you break it up a little bit. You don't want it to get all clumpy once it gets into your hot pan. Just make a little well in the center of your vegetables. Get some oil in there. Make sure it's really, really hot. Then add your rice.
When your rice is ready and fried the way you want it, it's time to add a little bit of rice vinegar and some soy sauce. And you're gonna toss that all together, fry it for just a little bit longer, and you are ready to go. Now you could eat your fried rice just like this, or it could be a little extra like myself. Add a few poached eggs, some eel sauce, some sriracha, even some furikake on there, and you're gonna have some really awesome, delicious fried rice. And lastly, we have pizza. And I know pizza sounds like it'd be really hard, but it's really not, because all it takes is water, yeast, flour, and salt. And as long as you have a mixer, just put it all together, knead it right in there, just let that thing go, knead it by hand for a little bit you want, oil up a pan, slap your dough in there, oil it some more, and just let that hang out for about an hour and a half in an oven, damp towel over it with the light on, and let that go. And in the meantime, you can make a nice sauce. Making tomato sauce for pizza isn't overly complicated either. You only need a couple things, like some minced shallots, sweat those down in some olive oil, and about a tablespoon or so of tomato paste. I happen to have some sun-dried tomatoes in my fridge, so I'm throwing in a tablespoon of that. Once that's all cooked nicely, I'm going to deglaze with some red wine, some of that cheap stuff that's been on the counter for too long, and I'm never going to drink it. I'm going to cook down that alcohol, then I'm going to add some thyme, our tomatoes, and if you happen to have it, the rind of some Parmesan cheese really makes a difference in any tomato sauce, and you're just going to let that cook for a good while. And then if you happen to have it, it's not necessary, but canned tomatoes will help bump your sauce up a, bit, a little bit. Now that our dough is proof, we're gonna turn it out onto a floured work surface, cut it into equal sized portions. I'm gonna do four, that'll make four medium sized pizzas. Roll those into nice, even balls, cover them with a the damp towel, and then let them rest again for another half an hour. Now all that's left is to shape the dough and make the pizzas. Now you can use a rolling pin if you want, it works just fine, or if you want to have a little fun, try throwing it in the air like I did. Never really done this before, but it worked out pretty well. When your sauce is done, give it a quick buzz with whatever you have, throw in some nice basil, rough chopped, get your toppings together like some really awesome farm fresh tomatoes, basil, salt, and olive oil. And then you just gotta put together pizzas with however you like them. Since I'm on a very strict diet, I did minimal toppings with very light dusting of Parmesan cheese. Make sure you cook it in a very hot oven about 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and you are good to go with some awesome fresh pizza. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time chefs.